Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, time for of the press. And at this point in time, we will take you through the pages of our national dailies and also have a guest who would make sense of some of the headlines. We have Chris uh, Wandu, who is a chartered mediator and a consul. And a consul. Okay, I, I would actually allow that slide. It's good to have you join us, uh, Chris. Thank you very much. Thanks, I'm so wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Same to you, and uh, great nice. to finally have you in the studios. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, we'll be looking at the banner caption on the leadership newspaper, amongst others. Pressure mounts on APC leaders to shift national convention. That's the board caption. And you have several riders. Postpone convention, ruin your legacy. Uh, PGFDG tells Buni says APC playing into PDP's hands. Selfish personal interests must not override party's interests. Uh, that's what you have on the leadership this morning. Bashu Tofa, June 12 actor and quintessential politician, bows out at 75. President Mohammed Buhari, governors and Northern Elders Mon. Uh, this is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. All right, and to the punch newspapers, New Year celebrations. Experts project high infection rate as Nigerians shun protocols at fun spots. Uncontrolled crowds at beaches and others to fuel community transmission. Experts warn. Recovery rate drops by 73.2%. NCDC distributes 400,000 COVID-19 testing kits. Also, Lagos train service will begin this year, says Governor Song Wolu. Um, we can also find here yeah, police go off after... Uh, revelers behind attack on um, Teni in the Rivers community. Uh, we can also find here, men exchange blows, uh, arrested as hired killer fails to eliminate pregnant ex-wife. Still on the punch, eight dead, 17 injured in Ogun. Aquaibum crashes, FRSC blames speeding and others. Buhari and others, Mon Tofa, as MKU Abiola's presidential poll opponent, dies at 74. And now Haneze is speaking, saying why Jonathan must support Igbo presidency in 2023. Sustain bombings, force terrorists to surrender, ACF tells military. Nigeria's debt vulnerable and costly alerts the World Bank. Customs and immigration and others fail to remit 127 billion naira, says an audit report. Those are the big stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. Away from the Punch newspapers, let's also check out um, the Nigerian Tribune. Looking at the Nigerian Tribune, the banner caption says, Governors to watch in 2022. I mean, you have, um, that's a pictorial representation of that. APC Convention, Governors Forum, DG Ford's Carlos call for postponement. And you also have, Caution Bonis Committee says, it's a plot to destabilize party. Ibadan High Chief meets Lekon Balogun and endorses him as next Olubadon. And uh, just before we move away from Nigerian Tribune this morning, former NRC presidential candidate uh, Toffer dies. Uh, he is also Abiola's opponent. I mean, talking about Bashir Toffer, who dies at 74, might just be dominating all of the papers. Impact of Cash crunch on economy worsens than COVID-19. 2022, expert sets agenda for economic growth and development. And that's the much we can take this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. To the Daily Independent now, Southern governors divided on zoning 2023 presidency. Also 2023, APC working on a lie that will return PDP to power, says uh, PDF DG. Says also postponing APC convention beyond February to spell doom. Uh, new findings may stop installation of Lekon Balogun as new Olubadon. As former commissioner writes, Governor Makinde, Buhari Atiku, Ganduje, Aim, others uh, mourn former presidential candidate Tofa. One shot dead as police foil attempt to burn Imo Monarch's palace. And, um, IPAC backs Buhari, says direct primary model unrealistic now, asks National Assembly not to override President's uh, veto. And we'll say good morning once again to Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you very much for joining us. Very 
Well, interesting stories, I believe, across the papers. I think we can start with the death of uh, Tofa. Uh, not very many people, you know, remember that he, you know, has been, you know, still in, in the, you know, alive, and um, he also hasn't gotten involved in politics, you know, since um, the end of the elections. Yes, uh, he, after the 1993 election, <clears throat> which was uh, alleged and purportedly uh, won by. Um, MK okay, Abiola, okay. and all the intrigues and politics that um, went through that period till the death of um, MK Abiola um, later, uh, Bashir Tofa remained aloof and just left politics. And uh, that in itself added to what some of us uh, learned before he even came into politics. He wasn't, he wasn't much of a politician. Uh, he was just um, picked by some powerful individuals who felt that time he can give um, Abiola a run for his money. But um, Abiola won him even in his own state. And um, as a gentleman and a statesman, he went quietly back to his... And he never for... I never heard him any time talk about politics or issues. But I, I would have preferred... I wouldn't know, but not, not to the best of my knowledge, I, I, I thought that uh, he could have put pen to paper to tell Nigerians what exactly happened in 1993 and his own uh, participation, you understand, yes. as a memo for uh, Bert, uh, may uh, he so rest in peace, he has gone to rest, and uh, Nigeria is left for the rest of us and our leaders to do the needful. So it's okay, 74, not too old, but at least um, for whatever he has achieved within, and he was a very successful businessman, if you know, very, very successful businessman, and he um, so rest in peace. Uh, not, not very often you hear of Nigerian politicians completely backing out yeah. um, of the political space. Exactly. You know, seeing, you know, the, the you know, financial gains yeah. you know, that are, you know, um, are possible. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, you know, like you said, you know, it, it, he's one of those who wasn't necessarily a, a politician. No, he wasn't. He was more of a, techno a technocrat than a, a politician. So, and I, I believe he was one of those that believed that Politics is not for making money. You know, for some people, politics is business. To him, politics wasn't business. He probably came out to serve, and when he wasn't, he didn't get the opportunity. He decided he wasn't a go. He was never a governor. He was never a deputy governor. He was never a senator. Uh, and also, I know, I, I know, he was never a House of Reps member. I don't know whether on other little or smaller areas of um, politics, whether he was. But he was never. In fact, he was. His name was shocking when he came out. In, in 1993, as the of um, NRS, and I remember vividly the, I think that was, it was that election that we started having televised presidential debates on television. Then the NTA, you know, network, um, he invited uh, Chief Abiola uh, himself, um, I think Sylvester Hugo was one of the uh, vice president, uh, presidential candidate, one other person, and it was a, it was a nice debate. But as I said, after the election, the man just decided to just go back to his um, business, and he was not heard from. Very good one, very nice gentleman, and um, may so rest in peace, as I've already said. Okay, um, away from that, let's look at the leadership newspaper, uh, the confusion that seems to be going on with the APC and her national convention ahead of the 2023 election. One would say that, yes, it shouldn't matter, but that's a ruling party. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, the leadership says pressure mounts on APC leaders to shift national convention. It should matter. It should matter because uh, APC is the, uh, uh, a leading political party in Nigeria, and it's also the political party in, um, uh, in power now. So anything that affects APC affects the country. So if they have not been able to put their ass together just about 10, 15 months to the general election, then there's a problem somewhere. And, um, and I'm seeing this as being self-inflicted, sort of, because if you realize what, uh, what has transpired within the APC in the last few months, you come to realize that, just as the Chino Ashitebe said in his book, Things Fall Apart, the center can no longer hold, because if you look at from this local government to the state congresses, to the other congresses and the rest of them, what congresses, it has been one problem or the other. And you have seen several, uh, even in the states, where ordinarily you just think that APC would have just had a, a, a blank check. We are having factions in most of the states, even Lagos State. 
where we are presently, that you think that is a stronghold of uh, APC, the hard fashions and the rest of them. And a reconciliatory committee was set up, led by former Nasrawa State Governor uh, Adamu. Until now, nothing has been done, but he couldn't even achieve anything. Don't forget that um, they also set up one before, um, in, in the past, led by former chairman uh, Bisi Akonde, and another one led by uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. None of those committees was able to reconcile uh, members. And you, he, but he, he, he's not in you because if you look at uh, the formation of APC, it's just a, a formation of people with different, several political parties, different interests and interests. And it's that interest that is still dragging within this thing. Those from the, um, you remember the days of NPDP, yes. uh -huh. you remember then AD, uh, they were the CPC led by uh, uh, President Buhari, and the rest of the AMPP too. But today, you come to realize that that problem is there. And everything is, is about 2023, who is going to fly the presidential uh, ticket of the party, who is going to be um, the governors in the states and the rest of them. So they are pulling themselves from, and it has been established, even within their members, that the current um, interim um, um, uh, committee that is running the party ought not to be. Because if you listen to what some of um, the key members of this, like someone like Festus, who has been kicking from us, said that, that this current interim um, 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 committee, as it were, cannot stand the test of time. And when you, when you come to, when it comes to law that their own convention, their own um, constitution, they not allow for bet. That is the problem you are having. So it's continue shifting and shifting, but they need to get their ass together. Because if you look at the people, we thought that the problem would have been with PDP. Yeah. But you saw the easy, easy way that PDP resolved its problem. So could, they, you, could, you also be, yeah, could you, because I mean, some people are insinuating that um, with all of this is happening, the problem might just be playing you know, into the hands of the PDP ahead of the 2023 elections. Well, whichever one they play into, that's their problem. But the fact is that they just have to get their ass together. Yeah, but uh, because if you, <laughs> um, they make some gains. If, yeah. if I, 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 they make some gain. What I mean by make some gains is that after the, 20, uh, after the 2019 election, some PDP um, governors have moved to APC. You know, I would just sort of respect that Rabbi Kwanko. Yes, yeah, so that is why I'm saying reconciliation. But that is just pocket of reconciliation. But the main problem is that there are some very, very, very fantastic big, so-called big shots within the party who feels that the party is being taken away from them and who be, feel that they are being marginalized, that they are not going to be given the opportunity to particip participate fully in the 2020. And you know the gladiators. We don't need to start mentioning them. So is, there, the is there a reason they may have ignored uh, Fesso Skeyamo? Well, um, they believe that first thought, you know that initially first thought Kiyami wasn't more of a politician, but now he's not a politician. And uh, they also believe that first thought Kiyamo has some interest in the politics in, in, in data. Some felt that Festus Kiyamo wants to go for the governorship of Delta come 2023. He has he has a running battle with the deputy uh, president, uh, deputy president of the of the Senate who seems to be the leader of the party in the state. And that is where the issue is. So most often than not, you might not be able to see them taking um, such advice. And also, you have seen instances where other um, senior advocates of Nigeria, who so are members of the political party, people like the AGF and the rest of them have come to counter the issues raised by Festus Kiyama. So APC in itself is just a house divided against itself. And I hope that um, they'll be able to put their house together this year. It just has to be this year because campaign will start this year. Election is just next year, so they must pick their various candidates, for, both for presidential and and that is going to be a, a, a huge challenge. And why it is getting this bad is because the only person that needs the party together, President Muhammad Buhari, is not coming back on 20, in 2023. So it's more difficult for them now. If the, the the rally point has always been, if Buhari is coming for a second time, then they won't have these issues they have. Of course, they already know that they have their presidential candidate, but, but, <laughs> now but it's going to be tough. You know, just to just mention, I mean, mm. shouldn't, because the president is not, um, uh, you know, returning in 2023, shouldn't, you know, being that he's the leader of the party, however you want to look at it, I mean, the, the national leader, everyone is rallying around him. And shouldn't he, you know, be concerned, a party interest, party, uh, how they call it, they put it, um, party statesmen or, you know, um, all of that loyal uh, loyalty to the party and showing up for the party at the time where the party is in their need. APC has a leader. That's a national leader for APC. I'm sure you are aware of that. Uh -huh. So, President, 
uh, Ashwaji Bola at uh, Tinubu is always, Jagaban is always referred to as the leader of the, yeah. if you understand what I mean. So, um, and I, the politics that is, maybe we have to hit it in here, the politics that is playing now is between the camp of Bola Tinubu and other uh, people within the party. That is, um, Bola Tinubu, as it were, is a front runner in APC for the presidential uh, ticket. Don't also forget that his own godson, who is the vice president, has been, um, uh, uh, who is the uh, vice president of Nigeria, Yemi Oshibajo, is also being backed by some people. Then other, the issue first and foremost is that, where is the presidential ticket going to? South, north. It has been decided subtly that it's going to the south. If it's going to the south, which part of the south is getting? Is it southeast, is it south-south, or southwest? So if it goes to the south, if it goes to southwest, as it may likely be, who is going to be? So those are the issues that a lot of people you understand. Yes. And but in politics, you can be rest assured that a day can be as as elongated to a year, and the year can just screen down to a day. Anything can happen in politics because if you look at what happened in 2015, nobody in his widest dream ever knew that someone like Oshibajo would become the vice president presidential candidate to um, uh, um, uh, President uh, Buhari. Buhari. He, was not even, he was not even in the picture at all until the last day. So let's just wait and see what happens. But I all hope right. that they will get their house together and just hold their convention and let it lay down so that they can start their campaign and the rest of them. Because it will be more challenging for them in 2023 than it was in 2015. In 2015, they make so many promises that many Nigerians believed and voted for them. Those, most of those promises they cannot fulfill. So coming back to ask Nigerians to vote for them, on, in 2023, I don't know what they're going to base their uh, promises on. Yes, there will be achievement here and there, but it will not be as much as the expectation of Nigerians. We're talking about issue of insecurity. That is one of the fundamental reasons why um, President Buhari was um, voted in 2015. We are talking of the economy. We are also talking of uh, uh, some other oh, yeah. agencies, corruption and the rest of them. Have them been able to fulfill that? Let's wait well, and see. Now, talking talk corruption, um, you know, the next thing, uh, next thing I want you to speak on is something that we always bring up. Every now and then, you know, but we only talk about it, you know, from pictures of newspapers and the likes. The government itself never seems to actually act. A few days ago, we spoke about the president, uh, you know, um, you know, urging for a probe on the NDDC and the billions of naira that have passed through the NDDC that don't seem to have gotten anywhere. Um, we've also spoken about the Auditor General of the Federation claiming that nine billion naira uh, seems to have gone unaccounted for, or missing from the National Assembly. Um, we also spoke this morning about 3.22 billion naira, you know, that has gone to ghost contractors in the Nigerian police force. Um, on the point this morning, it says here, customs, immigration, 13 others failed to remit 127 billion naira from, from an audit report. Why is this the stereotype, you know, situation in Nigeria, where you hear of these staggering amounts of money that seem to be unaccounted for, missing or unremitted and the likes, and we just move on? Because we're not be doing the needful. What is the needful? The ability to be able to arrest and thoroughly prosecute people that have been fingered uh, to engage in corruption. And that in itself is a problem. Or we go halfway and we just let them go. And part of the problem is with our graph agencies and um, our security agencies. They don't seem to do a thorough job because even if you get somebody arrested, and you take him to the court, and you cannot be able to prove and put forward enough evidence to be able to prosecute. It becomes a problem. Yeah. So that in itself can be very, very frustrating at the point. But I, I, I've always said that until we begin to do the need for making sure that people that have been fingered and have been look at the one of we are talking about the NDC and remember what happened at the during the probe. At the, the, at the National Assembly. Yes. You're off the mic and on the mic. Remember those drama and that Nollywood act that happened. And after that, then the House of Reps just kept quiet and just packed up the proof until the but president set up a, forest, a forensic um, um, committee. But how does the country move forward, you know, like this? How, how do we tell ourselves that we're fighting corruption and we just move forward, you know, when we, we see these things play out. We cannot move like, forward. It, 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 we cannot move forward. We cannot move forward because a situation where you continue to see that people are not taken and not prosecuted, it becomes, it, until you make an example of people, 
It's not the kind of this thing we are doing. It's just this pocket of one or two. Just make an example of people, irrespective of whatever they are. There have been instances where they've tried once in a while to try to pick up some, people, um, some politicians and the rest of them. But we're not going to the details of when you say that you have an investigation has been carried out. There are so many panels that we are set up. There are so many investigations that there are so many recommendations that have been made to the president, to the office of AGF and the rest of them. How many of these people have been prosecuted? High profile. We even had a situation where some of them were uh, prosecuted and um, sent to jail and they were quickly re released. I'm, I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. And they were released and we all want to start all over again. That is not the way to go because impunity will continue to manifest itself when people are not held accountable. But rather, what do you see? Uh, um, you see a, a poor man that goes to steal 5,000 naira, give 10,000 naira, and rest of them. They see them being prosecuted, being paraded by police, and rest of them. How many of these people have been paraded by police? It's true. How many of them, these high profile people, have been paraded by the police? And I also believe that the problem is also with our judicial system. We, not, we need to work on our judicial system because most of these corrupt leaders have so much financial war chest to fight, to fight back. They hire the best of sons and the rest of them, and at the end of it, they get away free. Then we also go, there have instances we even go into the issue of uh, plea bargain with some of them. And you say, oh, plea bargain is for us to be able to bet. You also go, because in plea bargain, it's a win-win situation. You say, oh, I've stolen 150 billion, billion. Can we have about 100 billion? You can take the money 50. Oh, exactly. And just get away. So that is the issue. So I think that this issue, and I thought that the President Muhammad Buhari, in the promise in 2050 that he was going to fight corruption, stand still. I just saw him, I, I, I just see him fighting his sitting down. There's no standstill, there's no standing. The way well, it is, it's even worse. It's a different case if you say fighting, sitting or fighting, standing. And then some other people would argue that there's no fighting at that all. That is what I'm saying. I'm saying that I've not seen anything. Yeah. So I'm just reemphasizing re what you're saying. There's nothing, nothing seems to happen. And I can tell you that if for whatever reason, if this government, this APC government, uh, uh, fails to win the election in 2023, you will see this kind of worm that will, that will be entered by another, if another particular party comes in, just like happened with the uh, NSA and the rest of them. I, yes, I believe that it could be worse when it comes to 20, after, after this uh, present government leaves. And that is the way we roll. And we continue moving as I said, nothing happens. And that is why the International Committee doesn't take it all seriously. On a daily basis, we are going and borrowing billions and billions of naira from China, from all over the world, that we are going to channel. Even some of those money that we are supposed to channel into this, I can assure you that some of these have been preferred by some government agencies and individuals, and they, can, they cannot be accounted for it. I know that some projects are going on, but I can tell you for free that all the money that has been we are collecting and the rest of them from each of these countries, I don't think that all of them are been changed. And it is where the president did. And because the box stop at the table of the president is the CEO, is the managing director of Nigeria, as it were, as a project. And you cannot be a managing director and wait for your company to run. Nigeria is running down and we are doing nothing about it. Okay. Uh, l let's quickly share your thoughts on this one. It's on the Daily Independent. Southern governors divided on zoning. Uh, 2023 presidency. Now, this is, uh, you know, earlier on, uh, those southern governors had agreed that um, no northern, I mean, no political party should file any candidate, uh, you know, from the northern part of the country. And they seem to, you know, go back on their words. They're no longer on the same page where they started from. It's expected. Um, don't forget that there's no way in the constitution that is written that the president must come from the north or come from the south and rest. It's just a gentleman arrangement and agreement by the political parties and our political leaders. And okay, if not have this, this period, then the south equals for equity and yeah. fair play. Uh, but uh, the way it is, it's it, 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 even some northern governors have already started saying that you should go to the south. south. I, I, I had the governor of Kassina State saying something of that nature a few weeks ago. The governor of Kaduna State have stayed same and the rest of them. So, but whichever way, the problem we're going to have, you know, I started, when I started, I said the issue will also be if it's zoned to the south, where will it go to? And that is where the problem is going to be. So, it's left for the two political parties, the major political parties and other political parties to make sure that, okay, it is the time of the South. Even some feel that, some people are even, some school of thought are even saying that these two major political parties should just only to the South East. Some people have that school of thought that, oh, okay, Southwest have had their share, South South have had their share. 
that between 1999 and now, that the South is, is only a uh, zone within the South that have not gotten that. But you cannot sit down and just be waiting for uh, political office to be just dropped on your table. You must work for it. If you want it to come to the South, is what are the South leaders doing to be able to attract other parts of the country to support them in the North? Because your vote in South is a look cannot win your presidential uh, election. Even the whole of the South cannot win you. You also need the North yes. to be able to succeed. So are, we, are they getting across to also uh, the northern leaders, the northern um, elite, uh, the northern people and rest of them, that, so that whatever person that eventually emerges from the south will have the support of other parts of the country for you to be. Because whether you like it or not, there is no way if you put the whole vote of the south together, it still wouldn't give you. It wouldn't own. give you the presidency. It yeah, well, wouldn't. Uh, we need to go. You know, but in in twenty seconds, you know, I just wanted you to respond to you know people who would say. That from the conversations we're having with regards 2023, it's pretty obvious that Nigeria is not interested in actually choosing quality over, um, you know, and um, putting people in power that will actually move the country forward. We are still looking for personal interests, looking for religious interests, looking for political interests, and not actually people who will move Nigeria forward. I would say this from 1999, even from 1979, most of the presidents or leaders that we had are people that. We are not willing to come out. To vote. Most of the time, we force them. It's true. That's what they always say. Start with Shagari, 79. <laughs> Shagari was a teacher uh, before he became a politician. He said, like, Oh, that he was not this thing, blah, blah. They, he became a president. We saw what happened. Let's even leave the, what do you call them? Let, let us even leave the military guys. 1999. Uh, Mobasanjo wasn't the best of the candidates. It was the military that forced Mobasanjo on us. The person that came after him, what happened? Yaradua. Your idea was, he said he was retiring after being a governor in Casino State. He wants to go back to his farm and teach whatever he wants to do. They forced him to stay. They said they forced him. From there, a good Lord Jonathan, yeah. just from Bayesa State, the man said he wasn't interested. He was that he wanted to be president. They moved him and said, okay, take over from him. And that is what has been. Buhari to a large extent will say, okay, for about four, four or five times, four, about four wow. or five times, he tried it and he finally succeeded. But so at the end of it, all, you come to see, realize that those that are willing, you know why? They will not give opportunity for the young people that are willing to serve. Because if the person comes, it will change the status quo from what they're used to. There are so many fantastic young people that wanted to run in 2019. You saw them, very, very qualified. I don't need to start mentioning them. But we do, are we going to give them the, so they are on to be able to dissect this issue of God for that reason. And so people that are always imposing, and that is why someone like me supported the idea of the direct or indirect um, primaries that are been, um, that was passed by the National Assembly. But you see what have happened. Some people with some godfathers within the parties have tried to hijack that and make sure that the president decided. You know what, what that, that would have given? It would have given an opportunity for us to come up with you. people that are so willing, and not just people that will be picked and picked by some individuals. Yeah. But we're going back that route again because the National Assembly definitely when they resume we expunge that aspect of it in order to pack the electorate. Right. We continue going this route. Chris Wanda, thank you very much for joining us once again and uh, for starting off uh, the year with us. Thank you um, very much for having me. This is where we wrap up with uh, Off the Press this morning. We will, of course, be sharing with you what happened on this day in history. And then right after that, our first major conversation for today is Nigeria ready for a global energy transition um, in the next couple of years. That's our first conversation for today. We'll be back. Thank you.